Good morning. Welcome to the interview series of the Professor's World Peace Academy. I am Frank Kaufman, the director of the PWPA, Professor's World Peace Academy, and we're very fortunate to have with us this morning for this series in which we converse with scholars from around the world, uh, Professor uh, Dr. Drissa Kone. Dr. Kone is currently an assistant professor of conflict studies at the Unification Theological Seminary. He obtained a, VAT, a Bachelor of Arts degree in education in the Ivory Coast in 2007. He worked briefly in the Ivory Coast as a teacher before moving to the United States later that year. Dr. Kone went on to earn his Master's of Divinity, focusing on spiritual counseling at the Unification Theological Seminary in 2012, and a Master's in Conflict Management and Negotiation at Norwich University in 2014. In May of 2016, Dr. Kone obtained his doctoral degree in Practical Theology and Peace in Practical Theology in Peace and Justice at UTS, focusing on transformational leadership and the effective management of cross-cultural conflict between communities. Uh, there's been a recent development in uh, Dr. Kone's professional career, but I'm not going to read that off now. Rather, we'll wait till he comes on and let uh, Dr. Kone himself break the news. The subjects of his studies, transformational leadership, um, cross-cultural conflict between communities, these are the topic of his recent book, which we will introduce, and the topic of the conversation we will have. So please join me to welcome Dr. Drissa Kone. Wonderful. Thank you. This is great. Very happy to have you. Happy to have you here. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Good, good, good. All right. So um, as I introduced you, I spoke a little bit about your educational history, uh, the various degrees you've acquired here and there, uh, both in Africa and here in the U.S. Right. And uh, I spoke also about a couple of your various appointments and responsibilities and professional positions you've held. But I deliberately left one out because it's pretty fresh and new, and I decided maybe you yourself could tell us what has been going on <laughs> in your life. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and so tell us mm -hmm. uh, about your most recent appointment. All right. Um, so you know, I've, been, I've been a fan of UTS for more than 10 years now. Yes. So I, when I moved in this country, it was uh, 2008. I actually um, uh, decided to go to UTS, so I started my UT my uh, graduate program, uh, MA pro MRE first, and then I changed it to an MA program, and then finally to MD program because I was more interested in a practical aspect of uh, ministry. Yes. Um, and and uh, when I I got my MD, so I actually uh, became one of the recruiter. Um, a UTS for about a year, and and I after my second degree, I, I came back to do the doctoral program. So it's a long story, um, you know, love love for UTS, love for education, but in that specific area and our component spirituality. Yes. Um, so I I think this is probably one of the reasons why uh, I was appointed to this. To, to be the doctor, uh, the, uh, the director of the doctoral ministry program, because I went through the program myself, and um, that's, that's something major. And also, um, I think the president wanted to actually uh, project a, a younger face <laughs> <laughs> into the program so that we can inspire more young people to pursue a doctoral degree program, because it can it can be intimidated for sure yes to 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 want to take that kind of challenge that's right but yeah i want to be a a glue i guess 
for many Wonderful. People, uh, for many young people because things that we're facing in society today uh we need like a an authentic voice yes to address those issues very good yeah. well thank you very much uh i merely wanted to uh reserve this special moment to participate in the announcement of your appointment it's very recent that there was a public announcement of your appointment to be the director of the doctoral program right. there at uts so i think they've made a tremendous uh uh, a tremendously smart decision mm -hmm. and um, I think there's a lot of wisdom in having someone that's been through it and also uh, your sensitivity to the kind of being a little scary and to help uh, young people over that step to right. want to uh, that's great stuff okay that's great mm -hmm. stuff but the main reason why we're here today is to discuss uh, your recent publication entitled The Path to Peace colon, uh, Path to Peace, Transforming Pain into Love. So that's available on Amazon, and uh, listeners will be able to find that link in the article about our interview. Mm -hmm. All right? Yes. Very good. So uh, I've, uh, as you know, I've read this book uh, a, a couple of times, few times, and have uh, endeavored to be part of, part of the... Um, commentary uh, for the uh, for the promotion of this book That's so right. I enjoy it and uh, I'm very happy Thank you. that we can have you here to explain uh, more deeply this all-important matter the the other thing I'll say before starting in mm -hmm. is when we hear your story which we'll, we'll launch into in a minute mm -hmm. it is it's so poignant and so relevant and and so uh, needed right at this very moment in American history and what has rapidly erupted into world history, the issue of race relations, the issue of, um, of bearing unjust practices against myself and ways forward beyond that are mm -hmm. really what are the main thing everybody's facing now, both uh, politically and socially and culturally. And so how interesting it is that you have written on this very subject in a way you should be on every talk show right now because, <laughs> you know, I mean, our country mm -hmm. is burning down. People are trying to find the right way yeah. to deal with the, the absolute reality of injustice. That's right. And so this is a great opportunity we have here this morning. Yeah. In the preface, uh, which often is used to, be the, the, the nugget or the nut or the synopsis or the main point of what's developed in depth throughout the book. You mm -hmm. write, addressing conflict at its roots mm -hmm. through a self-transformative approach yeah. could be effective in making the world a better place. Mm -hmm. There is no unity in resentment, no forgiveness in revenge. Mm -hmm. A collective responsibility is required to engrave in human consciousness the greatest value, values of forgiveness, unity, and peace. So in this brief couple of words, mm -hmm. you've introduced a great many discrete concepts. Mm -hmm. And uh, let me identify them and invite you to launch in whatever way you want, either on, on this particular uh, reading, what I've just read, mm -hmm. or about the book itself, the process itself, etc. cetera. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I, I'll definitely be asking about the biographical realities and the spiritual experiences that underlay your capacity to arrive at these insights, not only yeah. uh, your very uh, careful scholarly research throughout, but also the roots of your insights and inspiration. But yeah. here, here, as I read, um, addressing conflict at its roots mm -hmm. through a self-transformative approach. So the options on dealing with conflict are very often in the realms of political science, in the realms of uh, economic structures, uh, in, in macro, large kind of secular scientific analyses of elements that generate conflict. But, but you are jumping way down to, not down to, but way to self-transformative. Well, the, just my own very self is what immediately jumps out 
at me. And then you jump right back out uh, yeah. to, to making the world a better place. So yeah. uh, it's about the self, yet it's about the world. Again, right away, you jump right back out to a collective responsibility mm -hmm. is required to engrave in human consciousness mm -hmm. these essential qualities, forgiveness, unity, mm -hmm. and peace. Mm -hmm. So if you start as you like, but if you can, this in and out, this, this way out, way in, this self mm -hmm. and collective, the 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 perennial roots uh, making the world a better place yet we're dealing with self transform transformation if you want, can you speak to these the stretch in the in the spectrum in your very initial introductory thoughts yeah yeah thank you thank you i think um this is basically the um the main um thesis of my uh, of my book at large so uh, that actually, um, you know, peace will start with human beings in the heart of human beings. Um, we know um, whenever problems arise in society, people tend to come out and negotiate peace with some kind of uh, interest base um, or changing policies and, and law, which are great things to do. But um, I, based on my own personal experience and also by looking at some of the people who made a tremendous um, a shift in history in the, area of <clears throat> in the area of peace and reconciliation, I believe, I you know, strongly believe that peace will start within each individual. So then, so the you know, the, um, the direction is not out there first and then coming to me, but it is from me coming out there. Um, mm -hmm. So that's, that's the picture. So, yes. you know, the picture is to shift things around, not to actually think that it's going to be solved solely from out there. Mm -hmm. But I have to do it's, it's about me going back within myself and looking at some of those struggles. I mean, because whenever there is a challenge in society, politically or as individual actually making decisions and, and, um, and uh, or maybe encouraging a group of people to make a decision. So the individual is basically the root, the basis for, for change. Yes. Um, <clears throat> And um, one thing that I actually, you know, you know, when we talk a lot, we talk a lot about forgiveness, and and um, and sometimes we think that it's all it's the other person who is in fault who who need to forgive, who needs to actually ask for forgiveness. But forgiveness always both ways, and um, it's a it's a healthy process to heal emotional pain. Mm -hmm. It's not about the other person, you know, first. It's mm -hmm. about me letting go of what's going on within myself. Mm -hmm. And, and sometimes, a lot of time, it's being projected on the other person or another group. Oh, it's, it's, this, it's the Democrat. They don't love the country. Um, you know, it's, it's the Republican. They too, um, you know, they, they don't love... They don't love the country, so it's the blaming going, blaming game going on, without doing the actual work of self transformation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it's fantastic. It's it's fantastic. Actually, you've introduced. There's a lot of natural binaries in your, in your thinking, which are it's really valuable now because, as you mentioned, there's so much so much. Uh, of what happens socially and in the commentary world mm -hmm. that is one-sided. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so that, uh, that is one-sided. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so by you having this kind of seeming dialogical weave in, in every thought is very valuable. So, uh, not only are we, not only are we juxtaposing work on the individual to the collective larger work of peace, yeah. But also, even forgiveness itself. Even if we, even if we're just looking at only one small part of it, just the individual work of forgiveness yes. is not only 
forgiving the other, but it's also recognizing one's own role or yes. part. Is that correct? Is it, that it's definitely correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, outstanding. Uh, here's at the very outset in the introduction of your book. Yeah. You describe a a series of events that happen in your own personal life, beginning in September of 2002. Yeah. So, so you were a young man. You, you, you were born and raised in Cote d'Ivoire. Is that correct? Exactly. It's correct. Okay. And, and in the city or in the countryside or where, what, what is? Countryside, northern side, uh, uh, majority Islam. The, the, the country is the, <clears throat> the country. Interestingly, um, you know, it, the, you know, majority of uh, people in the north are Muslims, and majority of people in the south are Christian. And I think it came um, because of colonialism, colonial colonialism, and and also the the uh, the rise of Islam in the north, and then coming coming to the south. Yes. Um, and and the colon colonizers coming, you know, to the south and trying to go go beyond um, to go to the north, and then they meet somewhere. <laughs> yeah. In the country. Yeah. Culturally, yeah. And so, it, uh, you hate to use the word "interesting" because it sounds too removed. Yeah. Uh, because lives are so impacted by these histories that you don't want to just be leaning back in your scholar's rocking chair saying, "Oh, that's so interesting." But mm -hmm. it really is, in fact, interesting. It's almost as though Islam. Uh, many many West African nations have that north south quality to their to the religious divide am i correct it's definitely correct yeah nigeria is very famous for that yes. and um, and um it's a, it seems it's almost as though islam arrived by land and mm -hmm. christian and colonial forces arrived by sea it's <laughs> it's like that isn't it? oh that's correct yeah. yeah even that would be even that would be a very interesting uh angle through which to start to look at the realities and that West African nations mm -hmm. have to face this whole by land, by sea even. And because one typically looks at the economic and political dimensions of uh, the colonial, colonial, uh, w would you agree that, would you agree that the Muslim presence in West Africa is also could be described somewhat as in a colonial fashion? It's, it's, it's non-African, non-indigenous anyway, that's for sure. You no, know, it's not at all. And and um, I mean if you if you look at the um the uh the idea about uh spreading Islam, uh there's one uh component that is actually very similar uh to the colonial um perspective, which is um bringing uh, bringing, I guess, uh, salvation to the world by all, all means, mm -hmm. and um, and people have to change their way. Um, Africans have their own traditions and culture and religions, and those those religions were considered uh, evil, and that and African have to change their way. Even names were changed. For example, my name. <clears throat> Drisa is basically not African, it's Islamic. Yeah. Um, so, and then it's a long, um, long history. And the same thing will be, you will see in the South, in Ivory Coast, many uh, people have Christians' name um, because that's, that's also one aspect of, um, you know, you can see similarity. You can see, uh, <clears throat> And and because it's very hard to separate, uh, you know, politics and and religion in the Islamic theology, um, so that also play a major role into how things evolve, um, even within in the country and and many other uh, countries. So uh, I don't, I I see I see a lot of similarities there. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, in the approach and the mindset of both groups. Yes. Yeah, I've spent a lot of time in West Africa myself, and um, it isn't only from there, but it's really everywhere in the world that I really, I can't wait for the day when the infinite wisdom and infinite genius of indigenous spirituality is is given. It's it's not a it's not a 
recovery of justice thing. It's just, it's just a, and something the world needs is, is, <laughs> is that wisdom. Yeah. And, uh, I, you know, uh, this isn't pandering, but I can't get enough of indigenous African wisdom. It is such a root of mm. such an incredibly valuable collection yeah. of uh, insights for human life, family life, social life, uh, the, that the world can't, can't finally fully manage without it. And it's the same mm. for uh, many, many different indigenous traditions from the northernmost tips uh, all the way into, you know, whether it's India, Africa, Latin yeah. America. Yeah, yeah, to totally agree. Totally. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, but here's, a good, here's a good jumping off point because mm -hmm. you're, you were telling about the nature of your name. Mm -hmm. and, and this is what I wanted really to take a little time with is, is what led you to know what you know about the nature of peace and reconciliation, mm -hmm. it comes out of an experience that originated with your name, if I'm not mistaken. That's correct. Can, can you, uh, uh, I can read it and I'm going to post it with the article so that uh, mm -hmm. even though it's in your book, your people should buy your book, but mm -hmm. I'm going to post at least this part of your biography so mm -hmm. people can read it, but I'm not going to read it here. In 2002, mm -hmm. you start to tell a story. Can you tell us? A little bit yeah. about that. Yeah, in 2002, civil war, I mean, started in Ivory Coast, and it was a political, I mean, the, 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 um, a, a group of um, northerner rebelled against the government. <clears throat> and the reason for that was... If a, I may, when you say northerner, did it, did it have a Muslim flavor to the identity of the rebel? Yeah, okay. yeah. even though... Even though uh, one major player, uh, Northerner, was Christian. I see. But, but reality is majority of them the Muslim. And and um, so when when civil war started, people in the south, and then you have people all over the places in the country anyway. So sure. Um, the only one of the way for people to actually identify you as a rebel or not, was your name. Oh. Because name, your name will directly link you to where you come from. Mm. Okay. Even in a diaspora here, when I say my name, people will identify me with where I exactly come from. <laughs> <laughs> That's my identity card. I don't need... I feel <laughs> <laughs> if you're pulled over by the police <laughs> for speeding, just tell them your name. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I am I am I am running away from the from the um, the conflict the conflict where a lot of killing is happening to the south, and I get arrested, and the police the policeman took my my identity card and say your name is Brisa Kuna you're a rebel, mm. so he he doesn't he doesn't ask me. Um, any other thing, and I was arrested and, and you know, and sent in jail and torture. And, and I've seen people there, you know, people with, you know, everybody have seen that they're from the same region that I, that I, I came from. And, <clears throat> you know, and, and I get, I see that and I know deep in my heart that this is wrong that we cannot, we cannot just torture somebody, arrest somebody and torture him based on his name. Because I was innocent. I didn't do anything wrong. I was, mm. even, trying, I was even trying to be saved by moving from that zone. Mm. But, but because that the, the police was so, they, they could actually see similar, many similar names as rebel in the North. Though, so they won't dissociate and mm. Mm. make discernment about who deeply in his heart doesn't want war or you know or who is actually against them. Yeah. So and that and that that's where my I was so resentful, so much resentful to a point that I was thinking when I leave here I'm going back to actually become a rebel and fight. That's the point, the the level of resentment that I have. Mm. So here you were, here you were 
a young man raised well, innocently, actually seeking the more right, the, the most righteous possible way, leaving the region where where the uh, rebellious uh, instigations were arising, yeah. and just by just by the mere prejudice or bias or just they just say your name is this and it wasn't merely that you were sent away or sent back or 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 denied some passage or something, but you were ac it actually resulted in you being imprisoned and tortured correct. Mm. correct this is this is so extreme and yeah. and this torture mm -hmm. resulted in actually coming on the on the very kind of edge to the very brink, like within millimeters of actually producing the very thing that they thought you were, you were yeah. as fine as could be. They themselves create or came close to creating yeah. a violent militant rebel just, just by the sheer, um, the sheer yeah. abuse yeah. of your identity. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Like the way the, the way I was treated, uh, it created because this is uh, just make a quick link to what is going on in America today, with the police brutality and the way you treat people. It's like you plant a seed in them, and and their reaction can be very very uh, bad because not everybody is able. To actually uh, let go when they get mistreated, right? So that's that's what happened, and I I wanted to go fight. I want that was what that 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 was my heart. I was so it was so painful, and so unjust. Yeah, so I wanted to do something about it. And that's the that's the thin that's the thin edge of the sword, uh, Kone, uh, yeah. professor, because because. Um, on the one hand, on the like, I've often noticed. I've been in many uh, air, war zones myself mm -hmm. over the course of my life, and I've mm -hmm. often noticed that these young boys facing across from one another, rifles drawn, mm -hmm. they're all they are is just young boys. They yeah. they by dint of birth, they're holding a rifle on this side or on that side, but they're they're nothing but young boys. Yeah, uh, it's independent of their. It's by dint of look of birth, and so. Here, here are young men. Now, on the other hand, what the, what happens to the young man who, who, in efforts of 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 justice and fairness and and uh, uh, this lets that lets lets the one go, who then who then goes kills a school or something. Do you, that's the other side of the. Uh, that's that's the other side of the burden. Here's here are you perfectly good, mm -hmm. uh, being being led all the way to torture, the the supreme injustice over your life, yeah. and and the and the police stopping you and do the, and possibly believing they're saving the lives of innocents for all they know. Of course, yeah. torture wasn't necessary, but. Mm -hmm. These are the decisions in the heat of conflict. Yeah. So it's a, it's a, and yet they're exactly what you said about the United States. Mm -hmm. Here you have a police officer. He's experienced a thousand times real violence coming out of a situation. Mm -hmm. And for, and who knows how many people he's radicalizing based mm -hmm. on the prejudices that are, that grow in yeah. the, in the job. Correct. Is this, Correct. yeah. But, Correct. um, those are always sensitive to move them up into the present, but um, it's remarkable. I've known you all my life, and when I was studying your book and I read that you were tortured, mm -hmm. I, I was truly, I I could never, I could, I would never have been able to see any trace mm. of an experience so so um, indescribable in your life. It's not there. Mm -hmm. So so. And you, you brought us here to the point where you're saying um, you were on the brink of you ready to go home, get trained, and get, get your revenge, <laughs> and rightfully so. 
and yeah. carry on with your uh, with your experience, if you would. So and and then um, something happened, um, and I I call I I call it a spiritual experience, and um, you know a, a lot of time people who are in tremendous suffering um, will have that same experience. I've, I've read uh, in many places. Um, you know, I had an experience with Christ who has me to forgive. And so, so you were in prison. You yes. were still in prison. And, in and prison. At, some, at some moment, something, you actually have an experience with Christ. I had an experience with Christ. Okay. Uh, and then to make things clear, I'm, I, you know, I, of course, you know, I, I was exposed to Christianity, but never intended. <laughs> Yeah. Ever to become a Christian or never none of this. Right. And, and um and that moment, my the least thing that I was thinking of is to become Christian too. And um so I was I was I was shocked. I was under shock. I was and I was crying when I had that experience. Mm. And um and my my whole being my whole being felt differently after that, mm. you know, and I was deeply, um, after the experience, I felt a deep sense of peace within my heart. Mm. Okay. Even though in my mind, I was still, you know, <laughs> you know, thinking about what's going to happen next. Should I go or not? But my heart was different. Mm. It is remarkable. Yeah. But a couple of things. A lot of times, maybe people would be cynical about mm. uh, hearing such a tale. Oh, he's being tortured in the South. So he turns to Christ. It's the way out of the situation. Mm -hmm. hey, that's A. That's, that's, uh, and so it's so hard to, it's so hard to break through people's uh, suspicious minds and, and because all you're describing is uh, is a genuine experience with Christ. Yeah. And, and, and also you mentioned just a second ago, you said, I never had any intention or desire or interest or I wasn't trying to become a Christian. And yeah. from what I understand, <laughs> that, that you, you did it. You're not, right? Yeah. I'm, I, I, you know, I, I'm not Christian. I, you know, I'm, I, I still feel deeply in my heart that, you know, um, Islam has a, you know, a gen there is a genuine spirituality in Islam. And that's where I definitely uh, connect with after that. And, and, um, and, and I deeply think that Christ, Christ, what Christ actually, my experience was with Christ was a universal uh, principle that, you know, people, even who are not Christian, uh, can experience too. Can, exactly right. Yeah. So, yeah. so you, you know, there's a, there's an interesting story about um, Nelson Mandela uh, that I recently uh, read. He he went to a restaurant to have a lunch with his friends, and then when he was having lunch with his friend, there was a white man sitting nearby and was looking at him from time to time. And um, and then Nelson Mandela recognized him, and and said, "Oh, you know, please come sit with me. Let's have lunch together." And he came, and Nelson Mandela actually ordered food for him, and then said, "Eat whatever you want, and dinner. I mean, a uh, uh, dessert and and drink." And while he was eating, he was shaking, you know. And then after that, he paid the bill and leave. And then shake his, the guy's hand and say, nice to meet you again, and leave. So later, his friend asked him, who's this guy? It looks weird and strange, and he seems sick. And Nelson Mandela said, no, he's not. He's just afraid. Because this was one of my prosecutors when I was in jail. Mm. He, will, he will beat me and torture me almost every day. Mm. And he will, when I asked for, when I was thirsty and I want to drink, I was asking for a cup of water. He will pee on me. Mm. Mm. And friends say, how in the world, how in the world can you be 
kind to a kind of to a horrible person like that? How? How is that possible? And uh, Nelson Mandela' response was response was no one is born hating another person because mm -hmm. of the color of their skin. That's one of his famous quotes. Yes. Of his background or his religion, people learn to hate. So they will. They have to. They have to learn to to love. And the only way you teach people to love, you love them. Mm. You know. Yeah, it's fantastic. That's so profound. Yeah. That's so profound. Yeah. Um, and that that is kind of in many ways the golden thread that runs throughout the, all the pages of your of your careful study in this book we're discussing. Am I right? Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. And um just quickly before moving on, it's interesting to me the your description of the experience of Christ. It it has all the it has all the uh, coming back to the elements or qualities or dimensions of this Christ experience of yours. And I, I'm very glad we've been able to touch on it on its subtleties a bit, because if if you were ever in Christian circumstances, which you might be, and you. Uh, there's a certain there's a certain classic uh, narrative mm -hmm. of testimonies. I was this 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 Christ came into my life and this this this, yeah. and uh, and what you describe is exactly the testimony of Christians. And so I'm very happy to hear this this kind of universal kind of non sectarian non institutional affiliation type punchline yeah. to your as a story, because you said that once once that encounter with Christ happened in your life, yeah. you said you said you were still naturally like any normal person working on what comes next. You know, you know, yeah. do I get out of here? What's the you know? You're in the middle of a, a, a horror, and you're yeah. trying to get. But you said everything from that point on was under the state of peace in a in a state of peace. Yeah, and. And how is that, or, or what was the nature of that? If you can, you recall, or it's um, you know, it's it's hard to describe it with uh, it kind you know logical word, but my heart was different. I didn't feel that sense of wanting to actually go and kill another person for mm. what was happening to me. Mm. Even though in my mind, I know it was wrong. My mind was, you know, but the, because I was so resentful, I think God gave me an opportunity to let go of mm. because so, I was very resentful. So the peace came, it's, it's almost like removing a splinter or removing uh, a cancer or something. Yeah. The, the peace came because you were cleansed of, of something that was making you sick. You yeah. felt, it's almost like you felt healthy in, yeah. in a way. Yeah. 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 And so, so this becomes the beginning of what you come to understand to be a highly recommended pathway yeah. to, to address the nature of conflict at any level in human affairs. Yes. Yes. Okay. And, and that's what your book is about. That's what my book is about. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so here's another part. It's still within the introduction. Forgiving those who hurt us is a common experience on all levels, from the individual to the group to the culture and beyond. It is a journey to peace through personal transformation. Yeah. Um, I realize now that um, I realize now that I will definitely rather have two parts to this interview and yeah. cover some of some of the other dimensions of your writing mm -hmm. in the second part yeah because uh here i want to hit on a fairly big topic here mm -hmm. and uh maybe we can allow that to be mm -hmm. the uh the alpha and omega of this particular part one yeah all right um sure. in what i've just read it says forgiving those who hurt us is a common experience on all levels Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. I just read it. It is the journey to peace through personal transformation. And here's another arena where you might find mm -hmm. major, major cynicism. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. that that those those who are activists, those who are on the streets, those who might even believe in violent contra- confrontation with authorities, they 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 call. I think they they mock the concept, something like, "Oh, let's all get together and sing Kumbaya," kind of <laughs> right, right? Do you, do you okay. just, right? And so it, we don't have to just deal with a dismissive mentality, but but a genuine, even hard hard thinking. Mm-hmm. Uh, is moving from because there are individuals who who make it right. We make it right. Yeah. There, um, but and yet, yet the cynic or the or the doubter or the sincere doubter will say, but but where do we see that the difference has been made? Where do we see? Look at South Africa today. I I mm-hmm. can't, can't speak knowledgeably to it, but yeah. something like that. You have. You, you have Mandela doing the opposite, the greatest man in South African history, doing yeah. a, a Christ-like uh, deed. Mm-hmm. How, how do we get from here to there? Uh, I th- uh, let me turn it over to you um, on this one. Yeah. Uh, okay, sure. Um, this is a very good point because, you know, with, of course you're right when you talk about forgiveness. It's considered, you know, I think it's considered weakness basically in our society. It's considered to be something that, um, that you know, people feel like, you know, you, you really, you were such a, you know, weak person. How, how would you just forgive? You, know, you just have to, you have to take revenge. And, and that's what justice means to many people. Yes. Um, but reality is, you know, it's not, it's not actually, um, it's a common thing to see that every time people get hurt, um, the, 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 re, the, reaction, the reaction to that pain is actually pain going on, right? So the reaction right. to pain is to fight back. So we have, we have the impression that when we fight that person back, so he's going to heal the pain. Or people who can't fight will just withdraw from the relationship. You know, people sometimes stop talking to each other. It's simple. Yeah. Um, and there is no more communication going on, no more, no possibility for dialogue. That's also a manifestation of hurt, of pain. Yes. But a, a lot of time people forget that there's another alternative, you know, maybe a third alternative, which is to heal, <laughs> you know, <laughs> because mm. by, by fighting, you don't, you don't heal by, 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 you know, you know the whole paradigm of flight or fight uh, paradigm, right? Yeah. You don't heal from that. You, mm. heal, you heal by by actually transforming your pain into a sacred gift to heal others. Okay. And and people like that, we call them in the African tradition, we call them elders. Mm. And, and we need more elders in our society. Because this is, this is that thing that you, you, you manifest into your way of being. Mm, mm, yeah. and, and then it attracts people. It, because it's, it challenges the, the whole concept of flight and fight paradigm. Yes. It goes beyond, beyond that. And, and that's what we need. And, and that's why... Um, that's why um, Nelson, uh, um, Martin Luther King Jr. was hated by extremists in both side, on both sides. Right. Because people like that, they, they, they will, they don't, then it's not a, a path that is admired, but that's the truth. Yeah. That's the only way we can actually, we can actually go to a higher ground together. Mm-hmm. Because right. we take the others, we take, we fight, we're going to repeat the same cycle of violence. Because whenever I had a chance, I would get back on you. Yes. And, and it, will, it, will, it will destroy everything. And then we can even give to, our, to the next generation and, and the collective pain, the collective pain will keep going on and on and on. Mm. So... Mm. We there it has to stop somewhere. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. The what is what really what really uh, 
set off a, a spark of light in in my listening as you were speaking just now is the the secret of embodiment and the identity of the mission of of elders yeah um so that you're not you're not pro posing or positing a theory of peace and reconciliation you are what you are saying is that there needs to be individuals who have attained the capacity to convert pain to what to what was it to a, to a sacred to a sacred gift to heal others to convert to convert pain to, yes. into a sacred gift to heal others yes the embodiment of that yes. is that bridge across from personal transformation to the larger units of family, society, and nation culture. Okay, this is uh, fantastic. I've greatly enjoyed just the very beginning of our conversation. And uh, thank you for being with us today. I yes. look forward to continuing in our second interview. Sure, it was a pleasure and uh, looking forward to talk about it. I think it's needed more than ever. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Professor. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you. Thank Thank you. Yeah, bye. Bye bye.